so um big news the speed tool gx midterm destruction set was entirely released and we know exactly what's going to be inside of it and let me just tell you this it's a doozy there's just so many cards that have so many implications into the format and honestly i am just so excited to talk about what exactly we have coming into speed duels um also i did end up making a prediction video uh talking about what exactly i was expecting to see come out of this set and uh you know what my predictions weren't awful uh, I had a commenter go ahead and let me know exactly what I got right and my percentages and I'll show them on screen right here. And you know what? I didn't do all that bad. But with that being said, let's go ahead and take a quick look at what exactly we're going to be getting in the new Speed Duel GX Midterm Destruction Box. Alright, so here we are at the Yu-Gi-Oh card base and uh, we can go ahead and take a quick look at what exactly we got from the Speed Duel GX Midterm Destruction set. And... Right off the jump, the one card in particular stands out to me like a sore thumb. That of course being my boy, one of my all-time favorite monsters, Elemental Hero Neo Alias. This card is so unbelievably cool and I'm unbelievably hyped to see him in the set. When I saw this card get revealed, I borderline started pogging. Just because there's just so much potential with this guy alone, especially if they give us some Gemini support going forward. And this was one of the cards that I ended up predicting getting released in the in my prediction video. And I'm just so happy to see that it came into reality. Um, if you don't know what this card is, uh, this is a Gemini monster, which means it's both treated as a normal and an effect monster based on whether or not it was summoned uh, twice. And this Gemini effect, all it is is just this card's name becomes Elemental Hero Neos while on field. So the reason why I'm really hyped about Elemental Hero Neo Alias in particular is that for one, Elemental Hero decks now have a better light target uh, for their decks. So if we ever end up getting a card like The Shining, this is going to be a phenomenal target with Blazeman decks. Not only that, but Blazeman dedicated decks can now play Elemental Hero Neo Alias as their other hero monster as a target whenever they're fusion summoning into Nova Master. Um, overall, Alias is just really great. And I, so I said, I already know what exactly is in the set. And I feel like there's a sneaky good deck that you can build with the Elemental Hero Neo alias from this box alone. And oh God, I'm so hyped for it. All right. So moving off, uh, enough talk about alias. Uh, uh, I, I'll stop gushing about him. So um, additionally, let's see. So Car Trooper. So Car Trooper and Dandelion were two cards in particular that I was very reluctant into their addition into the game i know there's i've seen people discuss that dandelion won't be that bad because we don't have synchros etc etc however um i don't know man having the ability to summon two tokens just for free like that i feel like it's gonna enable a lot of shit uh very early on not only that but it's gonna be i feel like plasma decks as a whole are gonna become significantly better which isn't a bad thing you know plasma's a really cool monster but overall, I feel like Dandelion's going to be a greater hindrance to the game than anything else. And Car Trooper, man, don't get me started on this guy. I think Car Trooper is unbelievable in this set. Um, I think he's going to be so, so powerful. Uh, I already have so many ideas with this guy alone. I could see myself playing him in decks like Rat Toolbox, you know. We can summon him off the effect to enable plays with Zombina. Um, I can see him being played in uh, XYZ decks in order to set up uh, unique combination combos. Um, I can see him being played in, honestly, maybe Red Eyes uh, to enable some cards in the graveyard. You know, um, I can just see him being played in a lot of different decks and he's just so good. I mean, not even to mention the Fossil deck, which we'll get to in a second. But Trooper and Dandelion, I feel, oh boy, these are... These cards are going to be dr drastic changes to the format. I think they're going to warp it, in my personal opinion. Um, okay, so cross border. This card's ass. I don't really want to talk about it. Uh, it it's cool that we got him. I, it's not going to do anything. I think it's not going to make any difference, nor is anyone really going to pay much attention to it. I'd be surprised if they did. Uh, so here's the interesting thing. So we ended up getting the Neospatians, right? Hummingbird, Dolphin, Panther, Glomos, Grand Mole. However, yeah, you see that? No Flare Scarab. That was super weird for me. I don't particularly know why Flare Scarab was cut. It seems weird to me. You know, 
if anything, I would have expected Air Hummingbird to get cut because we're never getting uh, Air Neos. Yes, I uh, I know that I talked about possibly getting Air Neos in my last video, but that was before I found out that there was some like great conspiracy behind it. You know what? This set pretty much proved to me that we're never getting Air Neos, and that's something I'm going to have to deal with now. As for Flare Scarab, I... Like, don't get me wrong, I'm not, like, upset not that they don't have Flare Scarab because I think Flare Scarab is so good. But it's weird, to say the least. Um, as for another thing I wanted to mention, we actually ended up gaining Elemental Hero Grand Wall. And holy shit, this card's gonna be phenomenal. It's gonna be insane in the format, I think. I remember that in my video, I did mention that I could see this guy not being, like, broken broken but he's gonna be so good nevertheless um especially with like my precious queen being like a deck that's banned now essentially because of the skill no longer existing i still think that uh grand is gonna be very powerful for decks that can establish boards and can then just s waste their normal summon on him well not waste but utilize their normal summon on him i oh this card's man this set Right off, just from Jaden's uh, structure deck, uh, from Jaden's deck alone, is already has so many implications for the format, I think. Oh man, I love this set. Just from Jaden's deck alone, I am so hyped for it. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, let's see. Neo Space, of course, we expected this. One card that caught me off guard, though. Generation Next. So, don't get me wrong, I think Generation Next is cute, it's interesting. However, I don't think it's a good card. Um, so let's go ahead and give it a read so you know why exactly I'm saying this. So this card reads, If your life points are lower than your opponent, you can add or special summon one elemental hero monster, Kariba monster, or neospatial monster from your deck or graveyard with attack less than or equal to the uh, difference in life points. Also, for the rest of this turn, you can't activate cards or effects of cards with the same name as that card. You can only activate one generation X per turn. So... Here's the thing, what exactly are you trying to do with Generation Next, right? I, I think it's cool that you can just special summon like a Karibo, um, a, a Elemental Hero Monster or a Neospatient from your deck. That's neat, that's uh, that's pretty cool. Um, but after that, what's next? It's not like you can use the effect of that monster. In a pinch, it could save you during the battle phase, like you take a, an attack, uh, your opponent, uh, your opponent's about to attack you directly. You then special summon one from deck, and like, oh, cool, you you survived the turn. But like, couldn't you use a better card instead of Generation X, like Sphere Karibo? Um, additionally, I can see this being played in order to make the um, the Elemental Hero Neo uh Fusion Monsters playable. But even then, I feel like there's better ways of enabling that. Overall, I don't really see how Generation Next fits in to like the deck or any hero strategy moving forward um i'm willing to be proven wrong on this but i i don't see it i i don't really see it i think the thing that i dislike the most about this card in particular is that for one you need to have a life point difference between you and your opponent sizable enough to summon something but additionally like even when you summon that card its effects are negated so uh yeah. i don't know i have to be sold on it However, one card I don't have to be sold on is O Oversoul, another card that I ended up predicting from the Jaden set. Oh boy, I am so happy to see this card in this set. Um, I uh, sorry to bring up bring him up again, but Elemental Hero Neo Alias is a vanilla in the graveyard, and we have an easy way to revive him, which is whew, great. Ooh, so good. Um, I'm, I'm you know I'm gonna stop myself there. I'm not gonna go another tangent about Alias until in a second or so. Um. But just keep in mind, O Oversoul is phenomenal. It's just a free special summon of a vanilla Elemental Hero monster. Honestly, you could even play this in like um, Nova Master decks because I believe, if I'm not wrong, they play cards like Sparkman in the deck. So you could always just revive them, which is kind of neat, I guess. So I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of implications, especially with the uh, Neospatian deck, which has a phenomenal skill, which we'll have to cover separately because I don't think they have them listed here. Um, onto the other spells. Uh, I was a little, I guess, disappointed to see Contact Gate. It's like, it's neat um, as a support card for the Neospatian deck, but I genuinely feel like this card is just not all that great in um, the Neospatian decks right now. So let's go ahead and give it a quick read so you understand where I'm coming from. 
So this card reads, banish two neospatial monsters with different names from your graveyard. So right off the jump, this is already too much uh, of a condition in order to enable. This card, essentially this card saying, hey, you best be playing multiple names of the neospatial monsters. When in reality, there's like one and a half playable ones. Those being Grand Mole and Aqua Dolphin. But then, what, what, what's the reward for doing so? You then get to special summon two Neospatial Monsters with different names from your hand, deck, or graveyard. Also, for the rest of this turn, you can't special summon monsters from the extra deck except fusions. If a fusion monster that mentions Elemental Hero Neos as material returns to the uh, field to the extra deck, you can banish this card, special summon one of your banished Neospatial Monsters, and you can only activate one contact gate per turn. So, do you guys see where I'm coming from? You banish two Neospatial from your graveyard with different names to special summon two other ones with different names from your deck, hand, or graveyard. And after that, if you go ahead and make a Neospatial Fusion Monster, it goes back to your deck. What do you get in return? A Neospatial. What? They couldn't even give you the courtesy of giving you Elemental Hero Neos, the card that's the hardest to summon for the strategy. That's why I'm not really hyped for Content Gate. It's whatever. It's cool, I guess. But I don't really see any true potential in it so we'll see i guess um Conver contact however if you're playing a real dedicated neospatial deck this is going to be phenomenal so i'm glad to see it it's going to be great okay so next card up is actually a doozy of a card en shuffle this card was sneaky in my radar but i didn't feel comfortable putting it in there so let's go ahead and give it a quick read this card reads, shuffle one elemental hero or neospatial monster you control into the deck, and if you do, special summon one elemental hero or neospatial monster with a different name from your deck. You can banish this card from your graveyard, shuffle from your graveyard into the deck either one elemental hero monster and neospatial monster, or one elemental hero neos, then draw one card. This card is so cool. So I love the fact that if you have an opening hand where, um, let's say hypothetically, you're playing like an element, uh, neospatial deck, um, you don't really want to see your, uh, I don't know, let's say Air Hummingbird on field, right? You can activate your EN Shuffle, send it back to the deck, and then you get to special summon your Elemental Hero Neos for free, essentially, which is really great. Uh, this makes summoning your cards a lot easier. Um, also, I think it has a really neat effect in the graveyard where you're just able to send back stuff into the deck. Um, I think this is less helpful for Neospatials as a whole. Well, maybe it won't be. We'll see. But overall, I think I, I like this card a lot. I'm primarily going to be trying it out in different decks that aren't pure Neospatian, but we'll see. Um, I think it has potential. It has a lot of potential. We got a reprint of Galaxy Cyclone, which is nice. But we also did end up getting a copy of Next. I went pretty extensively explaining why I think Next is great. Um, I really like it, especially for dedicated Neospatian decks, because you're just able to special summon pretty much everything you want and go into whatever, which is pretty cool. Um, it's just good to see it in the set. However, this is, uh, you know what, I'll save this for last. Um, I'm so hyped for this, but Limit Reverse. Um, this was one of the cards that I believe was in my prediction. Either it was in the side stuff or um, in the actual Jaden deck. So Limit Reverse, I was actually super surprised to see printed, especially with Trooper and Dandelion being the set. Um, this is just a revival trap card for any monster with a thousand attack or less which is incredibly powerful. There's no strings attached to it, really. It's just really good. Uh, really enough said about that. Uh, this card is going to have a lot of implications, I believe. Especially with, like... Uh, uh, I'll probably have to, like, look at what exactly is available in the format to uh, to build around, but I'm hyped for this. Maybe uh, Skull Servant could be interesting. I don't know, maybe. We'll see. Anyway. Um, Hero Blast. Oh, boy. So, this card is... So cool. So this card reads, target one elemental hero normal monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand, then if your opponent controls any monster with attack less than or equal to that target attack, destroy one of them. Holy cow. This card is amazing. Especially, like, you could play this in your uh, Nova Master decks. You could play this in pure uh, Neo Alias decks. You could play this in um, Neo Spatians with uh, Neos in the graveyard. This card is just so great. Uh, just being able to just recover a resource from your graveyard and then just pop a card for essentially free is so powerful. Honestly, I am 
beyond i'm over the moon with jaden's deck so far it's just it's so much going for it and i'm just so happy about it but i've already spent so much time gushing about this deck um let's go ahead and go through the extra deck really quickly um we're pretty much getting a lot of the standard stuff we expected aqua neos glow neos dark neos grand uh grand neos storm neos is i guess expected because if we're not getting air neos we're gonna get storm neos i, I guess um, it's whatever. Honestly, it's gonna be so hard to make them, and they still shuffle themselves into the deck. So it's, uh, I don't know. It's a rough one. So we'll move on. However, this was shocking to me. We got Elemental Hero Brave Neos. What? You know, you could have given me multiple uh, chances to predict for this card to be printed into the game, and I would be like, eh, not really. It's not gonna happen. I'm astounded honestly that we actually got brave neos honestly it's not as powerful as as one would expect just because you know it's uh it's not really searching anything all that powerful uh in the deck uh because it's able to add a spell or trap card that mentions neos so that's cool typically the the way it was used in duel links was uh uh you summon brave neos and destroy something and then you get another neos fusion and that was like a really good combo um i'm excited to see what exactly it's going to accomplish in uh in speed duels it's a great card it's awesome but i don't know where it really has a home you know um especially with no miracle contact in the in the deck as you could see which was weird to me i if someone can find a way to break this card that'd be awesome but i don't know whether or not it really has a home you know um but i'm willing to give it a test though but yeah no Jaden's deck holy cow it um it goes so hard and i'm so excited to really try this deck out uh and see what wacky stuff i can do um now on to arcana and yeah you know guys as i said we pretty much got all the arcana monsters right like whatever um i was surprised to see the light ruler here i wasn't expecting us to get both like the the world and the the light and dark ruler so that was surprising uh, however, the thing is, we only got the Light Ruler and not the Dark Ruler. So, that's... Th what this tells me is that we might possibly get another GX set, which could be pretty fun to predict, you know? A, a little teaser there. I might be in the works of making another prediction box. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but yeah, overall, like, uh, I I'm not surprised. Uh, a lot of the Arcana monsters are not great. Honestly, they're really underwhelming. I don't think they do all that much. And yeah, it's it was pretty predictable that we were going to get pretty much everything for it. Um, on to the spell cards for it. Uh, Arcana reading, it was expected. Light barrier, pretty much expected. Cup of Ace, that's pretty cool. Um, I was, I was low-key, yeah, thinking like, yeah, it's, it's likely we get it, but it's nice to see that we actually did end up getting it. Um, after that, we get a couple of interesting choices. So the first one being Fountain in the Sky. This card reads, when a light monster is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can banish that monster, gain life points equal to its attack. Um, it's it's okay, I guess. It's whatever. Your arcana okay monster is going to be just getting destroyed pretty often, so I guess recover the life points you can. However, the nice touch that I did see here was Valhalla Hall of the Fallen. That's a pretty good card uh, for this deck. Uh, it enables you to summon any of your monsters. They don't really have any stipulations except with the Light Ruler, so that's good for the deck. Um, I feel like if you're going to play Arcana, you have to maximize your amounts of Valhalla the Fallen. Uh, in your deck just so you can get anything going so that's cool at least um onto the trap cards now um arcana call reversal of fate are cards that i expected to get printed so it's like whatever but then they threw us a curveball um they printed us divine wrath which is interesting um just having a generic way to negate monster effects is pretty cool it it's like it does require a discard but like that's not the worst cost honestly i definitely think this card's gonna have a home in the format maybe in the side deck but we'll have to see um i'm excited for this card another interesting choice that we ended up getting was by order of the emperor so this is an interesting card this card reads when a monster effect is activated that activates when a monster is normal summoned an example of this would be breaker the magical warrior that gets a counter when it's summoned you can negate the activation, then the players whose effect activation was negated draws one card. So, I I don't know how playable this card really is. Yes, you may negate the effect of that monster your opponent summoned, 
but you do give them a draw, so it's, it's a bit iffy there. Um, it's interesting to say the least. I don't think it's unplayable, but uh, I'd have to get convinced on this one in particular. Next card up is Inverse Universe, which what it does is it switches the attack and defense of all face up monsters, of effect monsters, my bad, on the field, which is pretty cool. A deck that I could definitely see this getting played in is maybe Koala. That could be a really funny tech. Besides that, I don't really know what other decks could possibly play it. Um, I think it's cool to experiment with besides that. But I mean, honestly, I don't really have all that much to say for Arcana. Um, I've made it no, no secret that I'm not a huge fan of this archetype. It's like, it's whatever. I'm not relatively wowed by the playstyle or anything, but it's cool to see what they got. I'm happy for the Arcana players. All right, now on to Mr. Dino DNA himself. So right off the bat, we can see a lot of cards that I predicted. So Seropod Brachion was a card that I predicted because it's a card that I've seen him play in the anime. Saber Swords just made sense as a 19 beater in the format. Anima Dorn Archisaur. I am so happy to see this card get printed. It's going to enable a lot of cool stuff in the deck with the baby uh, dinos, which we only got one of them being baby Ceratosaurus, which is fine. Um, this is probably the one that you want to see specifically because it lets you summon a lot more cards. Um, but it, I'm just so glad to see the combination of these guys. Also, it, I like the fact that this card can search you evolution pills, which is really nice. Um, next up, we have Black Velocii. Uh, unfortunately, I was wrong about all the, uh, the Black Dino being reprinted, but Velocii was introduced, so that's nice at least. We also did get Tyranno Infinity, which is pretty cool. This could be a strategy on its own, so that's neat. Destroyer Source. I feel like this was pretty easy to predict it being printed in the set. But holy cow, this is hype though. Dynabase. There might be a chance that you just don't know what this card is, uh, but let me read it for you guys. So this card reads, if your life points are lower than your opponent, you can special summon this card from your hand. Pretty cool, it has a special summoning condition. During your main phase, you can fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck using this card you control and other monsters from your hand or field as material. You can only use each effect of Dynabase once per turn. Now. I'm not going to spoil it quite yet, but there is a fusion monster that Hasselberry ended up getting in this set, and it's kind of cool. And I'm just so happy to see Dynabase here. This card was not in my radar whatsoever, but I'm so happy to see it here. But yeah, let's continue. Uh, we ended up getting uh, Dark Triceratops and Gilosaurus reprinted. I'm happy to see Gilosaurus reprinted. It's a really, really uh, versatile card. Um, and Dark Triceratops, is, it's whatever. It's not a bad monster, so it's, it's okay to get reprinted. Um, onto the spells now. So we have Big Evolution Pill. I'm not exactly sure whether or not this is the initial printing of this card or if we've had it already, but regardless of what it is, I'm glad to see it. Um, it's very great dinosaur support. It allows you to uh, enable your high level monster place, which is phenomenal. Additionally, I believe Tail Swipe was a reprint, which is great. Um, I'm glad to see this. Uh, this is going to make dinosaur really good. But it, it, besides those two cards, um, we have Fossil Dig in the format. What? I did predict this, um, and I'm glad that I was right, because I figured that if we could get cards like Reinforcement of the Army and uh, Fire Formation Tanky, we could get Fossil Dig, right? It just seemed, it just made sense to me. So I'm glad to see that I was right there. I don't think it's going to have as big of an impact as some people may think. Like, yeah, you can search awesome cards like Animal Dorn Archosaur. Um, I mean, but what else are you searching? Destroyosaurus? Black Velocity? Baby Sarasaurus? Like, I mean, I think the searches are tamed enough to where it's not going to be like that problematic. I mean, what, what worst case scenario, if someone searches Skillosaurus or hey, Hyper Hammerhead, ooh, um, it's, it's okay. Uh, we did get a uh, Space Time Transcendence reprinted, which is very nice. Uh, the deck will really benefit from this. Um, but new print alert, a uh, Typhoon? So this card is really interesting in the way it works so let me just go ahead and give it a read uh this card reads target one face up spell trap card on the field destroy it very nice very nice um if your opponent controls two or more spell or trap cards and you control no spell and traps you can activate this card from your hand the implication here is that you can activate this from your hand on your opponent's turn <sighs> the main issue with this card that i have in, uh initially is that your opponent does have to have at least two back rows on their field and at that 
SCP, one of them has to be face up. So the main application this card's gonna have is to get rid of like continuous spells or field spells that your opponent activates during their turn. Uh, and if they overextend with back row, you then have the chance to pop it. Overall, I don't quite think this card has a spot in the format quite yet. You could take it in against like legendary ocean decks, but it feels a little far-fetched at the moment, you know? However, I'm glad to see it. It's gonna, it's definitely like, I just think it needs a format in order to be really good. It's hype nevertheless. Uh, moving on, we have Survival Instinct, really cool card that I predicted. Um, but after that, we have Volcanic Eruption, which essentially creates a Black Rose effect when you have Jurassic World on field, which is wild. This is making me think that maybe Dinosaur decks could possibly tinker with the idea of playing Volcanic Eruption, like with multiple uh, Destroyer Sauruses and then like the Jurassic, uh, Jurassic Worlds. I don't know, I feel like there's something there. But wrapping up the Hasselberry deck, we have Paleozoic Canadia. I was not expecting to see a Canadia here. Uh, and this is really interesting. I feel like this card's going to see very immediate play in into the meta. Just because with cards like Book of Moon being at 3, Floodgate Trap Hole being at 1, and Canadia being at Unlimited, this is going to give decks that wanted to play cards like Book of Moon or Floodgate a lot more flexibility as to what other like limit three or limit one cards they can play in their deck in addition to Canadia. I don't know. I feel like this card is really interesting to keep an eye on. Um, but actually I lied. There's one more card that we need to talk about and that is Dyna Tank. Hell yes. <sighs> Let's take a quick look at Dyna Tank. This is going to be the card that you're going to be making off the effect of Dyna Base. Hence the name. All right. All right. So this card requires one machine monster, which is Dyna Base, plus any dinosaur, which is your whole deck. This card gains attack equal to the original attack of the dinosaur monster used for its fusion material. So it could be either very large or pretty small. Alright, going on, we can use each of the following effects of Dynatake once per turn. When a card or effect is activated that targets this card on field and no other cards, quick effect, you can target one other card on field that would be an appropriate target, that card or effect now targets that new target. So this is really, really neat protection effect on Dynatake. An ideal turn for you would be something along the lines of you special Dyna tank, you then fusion summon when a, with a fairly large dinosaur monster, you then uh, normal summon another dinosaur on your field. That way you're protected from cards like, actually I don't even want to uh, spoil this, but there's a card in the set in particular that's counters. Uh, you can counter cards like Book of Moon, you know, one of the greatest cards in the entire format. Think about this correctly, I believe you can counter the effect of DD Warrior Lady by costing another card be a proper target. Uh, the point is, I think this card has a lot of potential in the format, particularly if you if you built a dedicated deck for it. However, it is very fragile and it's very um, prone to interactions and disruptions. So do keep that in mind. Uh, the final effect of this card is, if this card in its owner's possession is destroyed by an opponent's card, you can special summon one dinosaur monster from your grave. So it also has a floaty effect, which is pretty cool. And I'm glad to see it. So now we're on to fossils and holy crap, man. This deck is so hype. So right off the jump, I am very happy to see that Gaia Plate the Earth Giant was printed. I did initially have this card as, uh, as a card that I would like to see printed and was hoping to get printed, but I'm just happy to see that it actually did get printed. So that's awesome. Uh, Gaia Plate Turbo is a very real deck, especially with a card like, uh, like Trooper in the format. This is going to be interesting. I feel like this has the potential of being like a meta strategy overall. So I'm just like super happy to see it. However, a card that I am not happy to see is Fossil Dyna. Really? Really? We thought this card was okay. <sighs> so I understand that in speed duels, we aren't like super heavy on special summoning. However, I don't like the fact that we have a president for Fossil Dyna being in the format. I overall think a card like this is really unhealthy and I'm just not a huge fan of it. I guess we'll see how much it truly affects the meta, but let's go ahead and give it a quick read so you know what exactly I'm referring to. So this card says, if this card is flipped face up, destroy all special summon monsters on the field. Okay. Also, neither player can special summon monsters while this card's on field. No one can special summon monsters. And this is um this is pretty problematic. Decks like Gilfrey Control or like Red Eyes Gilfrey, they're gonna be like whatever. Gaia the Fierce Knight decks, yeah, they don't care either. Uh so yeah, a lot of the top decks, Legendary Ocean, Turbo, yeah, they a lot of those decks don't care. But I I for the most part, I'm kind of like concerned for decks in the future, I suppose. 
but maybe it proves to be good for the format and i'll eat my words but i don't know i just i don't like floodgate uh effects in the uh in any formats really but we'll have to see i guess uh moving down some more let's go ahead and check out the other monsters in the set uh up next we have flint cragger um yeah so overall i was predicting that all the fossil monsters were gonna get printed that being flint cragger shell knight and weathering soldier I'm glad to see all three of them being printed. Um, I thought they were all relatively tame enough for the game and would be really good for the deck. Even though I did predict him, um, I was surprised to see that Mega Rock Dragon made the cut. He's just way worse um, Gaia Plate, but it's a, it's a cute card, I suppose. It's not good. If you're going to play a rock deck, uh, don't play Mega Rock Turbo. I just play <laughs> just play Gaia Plate. You're going to you're going to thank yourself later. Uh, but Mega Rock is it's cute. I'm glad to see it. Uh, moving on we have Revival Golem, which is kind of cool. Um, I really like this card. It All it does is that if it's sent from the deck to the graveyard, it's able to special summon, uh, it's, spe it's able to special summon itself from the grave, which is really neat. However, Big Tusk Mammoth was nowhere in my radar. I am honestly surprised this card was printed. Uh, this card reads, monsters your opponent controls can't attack the turn they are summoned. Okay, sure, why not? I really don't have much to say about this card. It's honestly whatever. Um, I'm glad to see Fossil Tusker and Medusa Worm made the cut. Unfortunately, I was wrong about the uh, the Rock Pac-Man Pac -Man strategy being printed in Hasselberry's and the Hasselberry Jim's deck. But it is nice to see at least one of them made the cut. Uh, and Fossil Tusker, I kind of just like this guy, so that's cool. Um, let's see. Let's move on some more. Here's the interesting thing. Um, actually, let's go ahead and cover that up real quick. Actually, you know what? There's a lot of cover, a uh, lot to uh, cover here. But you only actually get ended up getting one of the fossil spells getting printed. That being Time Stream, which is pretty cool. I like this card because it's uh, it's like a rank up for the um for the fusion of monsters by allowing you to climb by two levels each time you have uh, a fossil on field, which is which is really nice. It's it's a neat card overall. I don't really have much to say. I I talked about it in in the uh, in the other video, and it's a card that I already predicted. However, Pot of Avarice was completely off left field. I I did I did not see this card coming. I, I didn't think Konami would print Avarice anytime soon, honestly. My, my thoughts on Avarice, I don't think it's gonna be broken, at least not yet. Um, I don't think decks quite yet are able to effectively send cards to the graveyard that efficiently. I don't particularly see this card being like a staple in the format, but I still do think it's kind of weird to see it get printed in speed duels, at least this early on. Um, so this card reads, target five monsters in your grave, shuffle all five into your deck, then draw two cards. Very powerful effect. However, it's going to be interesting to see how players are able to utilize it because I don't see anyone playing this card at three copies in their deck, right? Because I feel like it'll break you up more often than not. But possibly it could be like a sneaky good one of in your deck for like late duels. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see as, as to how well this card is going to perform. I want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. But moving on, uh, we have Refusion. This is an interesting uh, addition to Hassel... Uh, I keep calling him Hasselberry to Jim's deck. So this card is essentially a premature burial for fusion monsters. You're able to pay 800 life points, target a fusion in graveyard and special summon it. And that's it. That's pretty much it. It's it's a cool card, especially for decks that are able to very effectively uh, fusion summon. This could be super interesting for like fusion party decks, uh, Nova Master decks. Um, what else? I guess fossil fusion decks could be, also be very interesting. Hence why it's printed here. So I'm actually kind of curious as to how this card's going to be played in the format. And honestly, 800 life points to summon back your fusion is not bad at all. So this card's going to be really good, I think. But here's the elephant in the room. The card that I would have never predicted, that being Mystical Space Typhoon. Holy shit. Do you guys know how long it took Duel Links to get this card? And... Keep in mind, Duel Links is light years, like it's leagues ahead of speed duels when it comes to their format. They have like Link monsters over there. They are doing crazy stuff. Mystical Space Typhoon is single-handedly the best type of backward removal we're going to have access to for a very long time. Yes, this even includes Cosmic Cyclone. Because Cosmic Cyclone, while it is phenomenal, and I mean 
phenomenal. A thousand pay a thousand life points, it banishes a spell trap card on the field. Oh, chef's kiss, very strong. However, I don't believe that we are quite in a format currently that banishing a spell trap card on the field does what exactly it needs to do. Because typically, the reason people used to play Cosmic Cyclone in the TCG is that they wanted to get rid of a, a spell trap card your opponent controlled that had an additional effect in the graveyard that they could utilize later on. But Honestly, that's not really a thing in speed duels. Maybe I'm missing a card or two, but overall, I think that for the most part, Mystical Space Typhoon is going to be everyone's go-to spell trap removal. And keep in mind, we are getting it unlimited off the jump, so expect this to be like a staple 3 of in pretty much anyone's deck going forward. Mystical Space Typhoon, Car Trooper, and Dandelion, I think are going to be the meta warping cards of the set. This set has proven to be... I think it's going to be a monumental point for speed duels as a whole because this is going to be this is pushing us so much closer to like an Edison style format and it's not even funny how how much it is uh and I'm so excited for that Edison is one of my all-time favorite Yu-Gi-Oh formats as a whole but oh, it's just it's wild to see Space Siphon here um uh, but let's move on um Foolish Burial reprint is very nice especially for fossils and oh there it is Sakuretsu Armor I am, <laughs> I am so astounded that we got Saku already. Um, this card's really good. Uh, it's simple in the way it works. It reads, when an opponent monster declares an attack, target the attacking monster, destroy that target. Simple effect, powerful effect, beautiful effect, honestly. Um, so, okay, I guess surprised isn't the correct word as to uh, me seeing this card because... We have cards that work similar to Saku in the format with like Justy Break or Widespread Ruin, right? But Saku works differently in the sense that it's just able to destroy anything that attacks. There's no stipulation that you need in like a normal monster like in uh, Justy Break or having to specifically destroy the highest, the monster with the highest attack point in the sense of uh, Widespread Ruin. So I think Saku is... Uh, is definitely something that's gonna uh you're gonna see it uh rearing its ugly head into the format and that should be really interesting uh moving on some more we have release from stone this is another card that i predicted in my video so all this card really does is target one of your banished rock monsters special summon it and that's pretty much it um i'm glad to see this especially with the uh fossil fusion uh strategy and um the gaia plate strategy so this is gonna be really good for rock monsters going forward um, surprising card here, a faint plan. So this card reads, monsters can't attack face down monsters this turn. So I feel like this card is going to be really interesting moving forward. I don't think that many decks are going to make full use of it, but the decks that do, it's going to be interesting. One of the decks in particular that comes to mind for me is Koalas. Um, one of my favorite decks in Speed Duels. And they play a lot of defense position monsters. Sometimes you don't want your opponent to like go ahead and give rid of your koala monster before you're able to set it up with like a uh, a spike shield with a chain. Uh, so maybe a faint plan could possibly see play in those decks. I don't know though. It'll be interesting to see what exactly this card does in the format. It's not horrible. It's actually it has some niche applicability, but we'll see. Um, Blasting Fuse is an interesting card. So it's, it's, okay. it's kind of funny the way it works. So this card reads, if all zones of this card's column are occupied while this card is set, destroy all cards in this card's column. So <laughs> I guess moving forward in speed duels, we're going to have to be a lot more cognizant as to where exactly we set our cards in the uh, moving forward. So if you are used to just summoning monsters and setting spells right underneath them, uh you best <laughs> you best change that habit real quick because blasting fuse is gonna ruin your day i suppose it's a funny card but i don't know how much play it's truly gonna see because if i read this correctly it needs all zones that includes your zone as well so you're gonna be destroying your cards but i don't know maybe you can build a deck that doesn't care about that but it, it's funny and interesting nevertheless i don't think it's not gonna see any play but It'll be interesting regardless, you know? Moving on, the last trap card we're getting is Spiritual Earth Art, uh, Kurogane. Kurogane? Kurogane? Uh, I don't know how to say that, actually. So this card reads, uh, Tribute an Earth Monster, target one level four lower Earth Monster in your graveyard, special summon that target. Um, This could be really cool in... Oh, you know what? 
Earth Toolbox could play this card really effectively with like uh, uh with Card Trooper. Like you could normal summon Trooper, activate the effect of Meal Three, activate uh Kuro Gain, uh tribute the Trooper, special summon like Rat for example, and then get your plays going. That sounds kind of cool, honestly. Um, I'm interested to see what applicability this card has in the format as well. So uh, you know, something to keep your eye on. Uh, wrapping up Hassleberry is oh, oh, oh we moved too far. Okay, is his fusions, and he got way more than I expected. So we knew he was going to get Skull of Geos, right? That was like a given. But one thing I was not expecting is for him to get Buggy and the Skull Knights. Or the Fossil Warriors, I guess. Skull Buggy is... It's bad. It's, it's, it's a pretty Cheeks card. It's not great. I don't really want to bother reading it. It's it's pretty... It's not good. Don't, don't play it, honestly. However, Skull Bone and Skull Knight are... Ooh, these are poggers. These are fun. These are interesting, actually. So let's go ahead and give these cards a read. Um, so Fossil Warrior Skullbone reads, must first be special summoned with Fossil Fusion. This card can make up to two attacks on monsters during each battle phase. You can banish this card from your graveyard, add one time stream from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect of Fossil Warrior Skullbone once per turn. This is an awesome effect and it's a super easy monster to make in this deck. It just needs a rock plus a level 4 or lower monster. Now we have Fossil Warrior Skull Knight. This card reads, must first be special summoned with Fossil Fusion. If this card attacks a defense position monster, inflict piercing damage. When this attacking card destroys the monster by battle, you can activate this effect. This card can make a second attack in a row. You can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one monster on the field, destroy it. You can only use each of the following effects of Fossil Warrior Skull Knight once per turn. This card is so cool, and honestly, I can possibly see this card being the true boss monster of Fossil decks going forward. Um, it's a 2400 attack point monster. It's summoning condition. It's a little, it's a little wacky. It's, uh, it's not my favorite, but we can make it work, I suppose. But I love the fact that it does piercing damage. If it destroys the monster, it can attack again. And additionally, if your opponent outs it, it then takes a card out with them or a monster out with them, which is really awesome. Um, I see a lot of potential with this deck, honestly. However, one interesting thing that you'll note is that we didn't get Fossil Fusion, which is weird. I expected Fossil Fusion to be in the set. I thought Fossil Fusion was a card that was balanced enough for the game overall, but I guess Konami thought otherwise. Honestly, I saw Fossil Fusion getting printed more likely than Mystical Space Typhoon, uh, to be frank with you, but here we are now. But overall, I'm like really hyped for Fossils as a whole. I think the next that has a lot of potential being super fun. Yeah, I can't express just how excited and how hype I am for this. Uh, all four decks were really cool. Uh, even the Arcana one, it was fine. Um, but I'm honestly super excited to try all of them out at least once. But before we end today's video, uh, we still do need to cover the cards that are going to be in the side. So let's go ahead and talk about those. A quick spoiler alert, um, I was so wrong about so many of these cards. So right off the jump, um, the support that Chaz was getting or the mystery duelist is Arm Dragon level 10 white. What? I, I, as I said, this card was nowhere near in my radar. I was expecting like um, white knight dragon and white knight princess. So those were the cards that I was expecting to get printed for the mystery duelist. But Arm Dragon level 10 white is wild. And honestly, this card is pretty hyped. Not gonna lie. Alright, so this card reads, Cannot be normal summoned or set. Must be special summoned by its own effect. You can banish armed dragon monsters from your field or graveyard whose total level equals 10. Special summon this card from your hand. Then you can add one white veil from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect of armed dragon level 10 once per turn. You take no effect damage at the start of the damage step. If this card attacks, you can destroy one card on the field. This card is insane, and if you're able to build a dedicated Arm Dragon level 10 white deck, holy cow, this could potentially have, like, I, I feel like this could be a real powerful deck in the format, but I feel like someone just has to find, like, the secret sauce to make it work, you know? But I'm excited to see how this card interacts in the format, honestly. But moving on, I was honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, pretty disappointed to see that Zane didn't get the support that I was expecting. I was expecting for him to get like Cyber Barrier Dragon and Cyber Laser Dragon with their uh 
adjacent uh, spell and trap card, but instead his support ended up being Cyber Dark Cannon. I guess Konami's just doubling down on Cyber Darks, which is uh, cool, I guess. At the bare minimum, Cyber Dark uh, Cannon is a really good card for the Cyber Dark strategy, so there's that. But overall, I think Cyber Dark as a whole is just not a good deck. Like, give Zane like Cyber Dragons. Like, it, I feel like they're they're playing too much with Cyber Darks. However, what this does tell me is that there's a possibility that if we get another GX set, they're gonna possibly give Zane a dedicated Cyber Dragon deck, and they're gonna save cards like Cyber Laser and Cyber Barrier for those sets. So let's hope. I guess I, I'm on my copium right now, I suppose. So next card up, Elemental Hero Prisma. Was anyone expecting this card to get printed? I sure as hell wasn't. Um, this card is ridiculous and. The first deck that popped in my head that it's gonna make use of it is Fusion Party with the um the the Dragoon deck um I cannot remember it, but the one the the, the fusion monster that, that's made from Plasma and Dogma. This card's insane, honestly. I am flabbergasted, I guess, to see Prisma in the format. And the second that we start seeing more fusion decks or contact fusion decks get introduced into the format, the more problematic the Prisma is gonna become. The saddest part about this is that. Prisma is not even going to be good in hero, at least not as good as it's going to be in other strategies because well, a lot of the hero cards or a lot of the hero extract monsters that need named monsters are pretty, pretty bad. So there's that issue, but I don't know, man. It's interesting to say the least. All right, then. So up next, we have Moki Moki Adrift. So this is another card that I had predicted to get printed for the Belowski Moki Moki strategy. It's great support for Moki Moki. It's very much balanced and I'm just happy to see it there. However, the card that I want to fixate on how is Miracle Fusion. Holy crap, guys. Oh, this, I keep mentioning. Well, I mentioned earlier how this set reminds me so much of Edison, how adjacent it is with the cards that we've been getting, you know, with Alias, now Miracle Fusion, Hero Blast, o Overzone. Like, all these cards are just, like, an amalgamation of one of my all-time favorite formats. And I am so hyped. Oh, Card Trooper, uh, Dandy. I am so, so unbelievably hyped to see all these cards in here. And honestly, if we could start getting some more um, Omni Heroes, that'd be kind of cool. Just saying. Konami, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. A few more could be nice. Uh, For now... Miracle Fusion's primary use is going to be to make Brave Neos, which again, I don't know how much it's going to be, how much it's going to really do, given that it's the pull a card that's able to search after attacks is very narrow. But the real deck that I can see using uh, Miracle Fusion is like the Nova Master Turbo decks or the uh, the Elemental Hero Sparkman Toolbox uh, decks as well. Those definitely can make use of Miracle Fusion by using your graveyard as another resource, which is really great. Um, but I'm overall just super happy to see Miracle Fusion. It's a card that I've been super excited to see heroes get. And a card that I think is like well overdue for hero decks to give them that little nudge to start being a little more competitive in the format. Uh, moving on, we have White Veil. So this is going to be the spell card that you're going to be searching off the Armed Dragon level 10 monster. So what does it what does it do? Well, this card reads: While the equipped monster battles, your opponent can't activate spell and trap cards until the end of the damage step. If an attack is declared involving the equipped monster, negate the effect of face-up spell and trap cards to your opponent controls until the end of the damage step, even if this card leaves the field. When the equipped monster destroys the opponent's monster by battle, you can destroy all spell and trap cards to your opponent controls. When this face-up card in the spell and trap card zone leaves the field, that player takes 3,000 damage. So, White Bell, kind of a cool card. Honestly, this makes whatever monsters that play it a real nuisance to deal with because they are really difficult to, like, I guess, actively contain. However, White Bell, I think, is balanced enough in the game where I don't particularly think it's going to be metal warping or unbelievably problematic because for one this card has a huge red target on its back because when this card leaves the field that player takes 3000 damage 
um that's insane so that means like if you equip it to a monster and you just book a moon that monster card leaves the field if you mst the card if you cosmic the card if you twister the card if you typhoon the card name your poison um if you get rid of this card in any way shape or form bomb voyage like that card's you're taking 3,000 points life points however white veil with arm dragon level 10 that's an interesting combination i'm not gonna lie but i'm willing to see what exactly people cook up with this card next up is one of the crazier cards that we are gonna see get printed in this set that of course being survival's end and i feel like i haven't even scratched the surface as to what potential this card possibly has going forward so this card reads destroy as many normal monsters on the field as possible if you do special event, level 4 or lower dinosaur monsters from your deck up to the number of destroyed cards but destroy it during the end phase you can banish this card from the graveyard target one dinosaur monster you control and one card your opponent controls destroy them i think this is going to be one of the best pieces of support dinosaur decks are going to have available to them and potentially you could see dinosaur decks playing cards like like dandelion is an example to get like vanillas on their field um or possibly like um, i don't know maybe the paleos that could be cool um i guess uh saber sores like i could definitely see them making use of like a good amount of vanillas in their deck or cards that treat themselves as vanillas in order to special summon their monsters like baby sarasaurus to enable all their plays i feel like there's a lot of potential with this card that i'm just like not able to see initially and i am so excited to see what players are going to come up with this card is unbelievable it's so powerful and it's so hype but i believe that wraps up all the spell and trap cards and monsters now for the fusions and these are interesting ones so moki moki king we already knew so it's it's whatever however elemental hero wild edge is interesting i guess um it's a card that we were missing out of the the dual academy set for gx uh so it's interesting to see it get printed here however i much rather have seen almost anything else besides wild edge it's it's cool to have it but uh, it's whatever honestly maybe hero decks can make use of it but we'll see i guess um but besides that yeah um honestly i am like beyond ecstatic as to as to the set as a whole and if i had one complaint in particular is that we didn't get the uh, destiny hero support that i wanted to see that of course being the dreadmaster uh, essentially strategy um i feel like sh uh astra as a whole got pretty shafted but we did end up avoiding talking about the skills this video is already long enough as it is and i'm planning on a separate video going in depth about each and every single skill because i have a lot of thoughts about those as well but overall guys i'm actually really happy about the set it went beyond my expectations speed duels i think as a whole is gonna be a lot more interesting and i already love the format i think uh this is gonna be the little bump it needed to truly feel as its own format and kind of just like push the game to to new heights it hasn't uh, seen before yeah as i said i am planning on a future video very soon covering every single skill in this set and uh talking about potential decks that we could see and or implications that i could uh potentially see into the format um but overall as i said super happy about this set super excited moving forward and i let me know would you guys like to see me make a video talking about potential future sets after the release of the set what could possibly come next i had a lot of fun making a prediction video about regarding this set as a whole and am more than willing to make another video talking about stuff like that but if you did end up enjoying today's video consider leaving a like and maybe subscribing for more Yu-Gi-Oh content in the future um and if you're still in the mood for more Yu-Gi-Oh content consider clicking right here to check out my progression series that i'm doing with my friends or right here to check out my master duel series that i have going on right now but stay tuned for future episodes but stay tuned for future videos where as i said i'll be covering every single skill from the set and i'm gonna be trying making an effort to make a lot more speed dueling videos moving forward but with that i've been topsy have a wonderful rest of your day and i'll see you on the next one bye